Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, whatever time today's video finds you. It's your boy Jay here, and today, today, we're going to be talking about Dragon's Dogma 2. But before I get into that, uh, this is going to be the only video y'all going to get this week. I meant to have this video out earlier this week, but your boy got sick, man. I had some stomach issues. It was crazy. So even in this video, if you hear my stomach going crazy, just ignore it, all right? So I would just put that out there right now. So let's move, in, let's move it along. Talk about Dragon's Dogma 2, all right? Now... The game, from what I hear, is good. The game is pretty good, right? From all the reviews and all the people actually playing it, I hear that the game is good, but the discourse around the game, right? And there are certain aspects of the game that are less than perfect, and I think if you take a step back and really look at you know what has happened here with Dragon's Dogma 2, it kind of highlights almost everything that is wrong with modern gaming while still being a good game right so let's dive right in let's talk about the microtransactions right so the reviewers get the game and some of them know microtransactions gonna be in it some of them don't whatever that happens and then you know day one comes out and then you check at the Steam store and you're like yo look at this long list of microtransactions what the heck is this in my full price game right microtransactions in a full price game it's going to be a bad taste. It like, it's a bad taste in your mouth, but unfortunately, it kind of feels like we've lost the war against microtransactions, right? I feel like most of the people who are the loudest about it are in a minority stance, you know what I mean? Like, most of us that are on Twitter tweeting about video games, here on YouTube talking about video games, we're, we're, we're plugged in, we're tapped in, you know? And most of us kind of feel the same, more or less, about microtransactions. Game is full price, keep this MTX out of my game, right? But, boom, here we are, full price, $70, and we got microtransactions on top. And not only that, not only are the microtransactions just cosmetics, right? Because it's one thing if, you know, your microtransaction is this cool suit of armor that has no stats, it's only a look, it, it makes you look cool or something. Alright, whatever, blah, it's still kind of crappy, but it doesn't really affect the gameplay side of things. It's just a look, right? You're paying for your character to look a certain way, right? Not all microtransactions are the same, right? For example, like Pokemon Unite and Diablo Immortal, right? Weren't those games where like, if you wailed in on it, you could be stronger than everybody else and nobody could fight you because you were so strong because you dumped buckets of money in the game. That's not really what's going on here. But, but there has been misinformation about the way we've been talking about these microtransactions when it comes to Dragon's Dogma 2. People are like, oh, they took fast travel out the game so they can sell it to you in the store. That's that's not true. That's not <laughs> that's not how this stuff works, right? They they did sell you, you know, a piece of the fast travels process in the store, which is kind of crappy. And it does have a bad look when the director of the game said, we deliberately made this game without fast travel. You're supposed to use ox carts. And then later on in the game, you'll use the, the fairy stones and the, and the rift crystals and whatever, whatever. But then, boom, it turns around and pow, it's in the, the DLC list, right? Now, if you don't know Dragon's Dogma, then I see how it could look like, oh, they're selling, they're selling fast travel to us. This is awful. Oh, it's the worst thing ever right but that's not what's going on here but it also kind of highlights how we don't trust these companies no more like we don't <laughs> gamers you know the ones that are tapped in plugged up right the ones that are talking about games the ones that are the most passionate about gaming as a medium nobody trusts these companies anymore right like if you would said to me oh somebody is selling fast travel in a microtransaction 10 years ago i'd have been like bro ain't no way that's crazy but today you say that to me, I'm like, oh, okay, who is it, EA? I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I could believe that. Maybe maybe ActiBlizz is doing that, you know what I mean? Now, we're getting to this point where it's like, we don't even, we don't really trust these game companies to be doing the right thing when it comes to, you know, microtransactions and stuff like that. Even though, like, you know, spreading false discourse about the microtransactions, that ain't cool either, right? Like, you gotta be able to get your facts straight and, you know, be mad at the correct thing, right? But if you're out here mad at something that's not true, you, you got to do a little bit more research. You got to figure out what to be mad at before you be mad. 
This takes me back to when I said earlier that some reviewers knew that the microtransactions were in the game, some reviewers didn't. Uh, one who did know uh, was Fighting Cowboy, right? He saw the microtransactions, he looked at the list, and he reviewed the list and was like, yeah, this is kind of stupid because everything in this list is already in the game, in abundance, you don't need any of these microtransactions. He thought it was a moot point to even talk about it because nobody was going to be indulging in them, you know, the way he thought that maybe another game would need to be because, you know, other games, they take out something powerful or something that's essential or have an EXP booster in the shop. He saw that none of those things are in this list and he was like, this is stupid. I don't even know why these are here. And he went over in great detail about what each of the microtransactions are. And he's not the only one that's done this, right? So, you know, he tells you what each of these things are after the fact, right? But people were mad at him for not disclosing that the microtransactions were in the game. When he looked at it and he was like, you don't you don't need any, any of these microtransactions because all this stuff is in the game already. We don't even know why Capcom put these microtransactions in the game because they're kind of redundant. They're kind of stupid, you know? And that leads me back to my whole, like, it feels like we lost the microtransaction war, right? Like, as soon as the suits, the CEOs, the stockholders are looking at stuff like FIFA, NBA, Fortnite, Call of Duty, most of those games are full price with their microtransactions, just profit, 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 hand over fist, profit, going crazy. Some of these other companies are looking at them like, damn, they're making a lot of money over there. I mean, the stocks, stocks only go up, right? So stocks gonna go up if we put microtransactions in. And these microtransactions kind of feel like there was something dumped in the game after the fact over some redundant stuff that you really don't need, right? It, it, which makes it even more baffling that they're even here in the first place. It's like, why did you put this in? Like, what? And now we're here talking about these microtransactions when the real story should be the performance right the performance of the game now uh capcom has said previously that they're going to be you know shifting to pc as their main platform cool right i don't play games on my pc i choose to play on the console but whatever uh but the pc port of this game has some of the worst performance reported unless you got a beefy beefy big boy rig right but that that is you know a whole lot of money uh, in gaming, right? But, you know, these are hardcore gamers we're talking about. These are people the most passionate about the gaming medium. Uh, so, but even then, you know, you got a 4090 and a big bad CPU in there and you're still chugging along through town. It's not a good look. It's not a good look. Uh, perhaps should have delayed it so that you could polish it up some more so that it runs better, right? Uh, now, I've heard, you know, on console, the performance is a little bit better, but, um, you know, it, it's one thing like, okay, we're gonna release day and date with PC. Sounds cool on paper. Sounds like something everybody wants. Yeah, day and date with PC, let's go. But like, I, I don't know, I feel like maybe it would have been better to focus on one or the other, getting one or the other out first, whether it's consoles first and then PC later so they can optimize it to satisfy, you know, many of the different rig configurations, right? Because like your graphics card and your CPU are two different things to account for and everyone's hardware is a little bit different when it comes to the PC space. Whereas consoles, all PS5s are PS5s. Right, all Xbox Series X's are Xbox Series X's. They know what to expect. Maybe a little bit easier to optimize for. Maybe they're not as powerful, sure, but they're a known entity. Whereas people's PC rigs have different configurations and all kind of different stuff going on. And then like the anti-cheat in the background slowing down the performance even more. So it's 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 a lot going on, right? The performance is what we really should be talking about, but we're stuck trying to fight this battle about microtransactions that people are out here spreading lies about, whatever. So, and that's also part of the modern games thing where it's like, damn, release broken game now for, you know, Q1 profits and we can fix it later with patches, right? And that's a real thing. That's many, many, many games releasing now in the modern era. Comes out, broken is all hell. Like, oh my God, this, <laughs> this is running like trash, you know, when you boot it up and then you gotta wait for them to patch it before you buy it which is what i'm doing right they announced that they've got you know uh, a dragon's dogma 2 patch coming 
out to help with performance and I don't actually have the game yet. I'm gonna wait till that patch comes out, then I'm gonna buy it on PS5, probably turn off ray tracing and get some better performance and play it that way. But like, you know, it's a sentiment that I've been thinking about too where buying on day one is you buy the worst version of the product for the most money up front. Whereas on, if you wait a little bit on the back end, you might catch a sale, a couple patches have been patched in, and suddenly, hey, <laughs> I didn't pay $70 for the busted mess on day one. I paid $40 six months later for a patched up smooth good time. Ooh, right? That's also a modern gaming thing, right? Like, oh, this performance is ass on day one. Very common in modern day gaming, right? Like I said, you know, with the title of this video, like Dragon's Dogma, despite being a pretty good game, kind of highlights almost everything that's wrong with modern gaming. Crappy performance on day one, high price tag, microtransactions in it, and then gaming discourse about nobody really know what they're talking about. Kind of reminds me of the Power World AI situation. Do we actually have proof that Power World used AI? Hit me in the comments down below if you know uh, or have proof of AI being used to make Power World, right? I'd, I'd really like to know. And that's gonna be pretty much it for today's video. Uh, I probably just kind of skimmed the surface of the topic, really. Uh, I'm looking forward to the comments to come in, right? I do plan on replying to each and every comment that hits this video. Uh, once again, sorry for the only one upload this week. Got super sick. Uh, it, it is what it is. Uh, you roll with the punches, right? But I'm um, looking forward to applying to all the comments in this vid. And as always, people, happy, happy gaming. Peace.